Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special SEM Rush webinar. Uh, we have with us one of the OG webinar uh, hosts and guests, Mr. Craig Campbell. Craig, how's it going? All good. Other than I've got this coronavirus thing going on, <coughs> <coughs> I genuinely have. I'm not well, man. But yeah, yeah you look all good. You look, you look worse than you usually do, which is quite a feat because you usually look pretty bad. So yeah. <laughs> I understand it was your birthday recently. Yes, the big 3-0. The big 3-0 plus what? Yeah. <laughs> plus a couple no more. Comment. No comment. <laughs> good lad. I seen you uh you're celebrating with your family and your and your son and stuff like that. Is that a good good time for all? Okay, it was just a quiet one. His birthday also was at uh, the start of February. He was born the first, I was born in the third. Um so we had a little joint party for um family. Um and yeah, the missus the missus more into the parties than me. I hate all that being the centre of attention on a party. I know people laugh and go, "Fuck, he's never off." Oh, I'm swearing and everything. <laughs> um, he's never off the Medic webinar. medication. Um, he's never off the webinar, so he loves the attention. But genuinely, I hate um, you know parties all being about me and stuff. So kind of passed the buck on to Charlie and made it all about him. And I stood at the bar just drinking beer so yeah it was good excellent oh, i'm glad to i'm glad to hear it we've got a bunch of people coming into the uh the chat we've got lean baxter from costa del sol someone from hawaii making us jealous so i'm also a little bit ill it's not coronavirus though i probably shouldn't have gave you that french kiss at your party because i think i've got something off of you <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, i was about to say some of the exotic areas that these guys are from i'm very jealous we need to I actually need to get my finger out and uh, get something booked for March. Um, I'll message you later on that. But yeah, I need to vitamin D, I'm dying here. Yeah, likewise, likewise. Um, pasty Scots abroad, what what a sight. Um, so talking about sites, see that for a segue? Well, we've been given a bunch of really great websites. So in previous webinars, um, one of the things we come up against is we get given several hundred websites and we need to pick the ones that we can kind of audit live and give some advice for. Inevitably, there's so many things that we want to audit on each person's website that we only end up doing like two or three. So I think we should, I've got a lot. I've got one, two, three, four. I've got about 10 that I could potentially go through. So we'll just try and smash through as many as possible. Um, guys in the chat, if you get any questions as we go through, or if you've already submitted your website and you're in the chat, please submit it again in the chat and we can maybe do that one live because you've made the effort to come on the live webinar. Um, Juicing Systems, hello from BC Canada. I've seen that one, so I know we've got your website somewhere. Um, do you want to kick it off, Craig? Uh, do you want to do the first one? We'll just pass them backwards and forwards. I'd love to do the first one, man. So, yes, wait till you see this. Wait till you see what I've got in store. I'm going to look real clever here. Um, so I'm just going to share the screen. Do, 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 do. Can you see my screen okay? Mm-hmm. Right. So, first website. Um, now, going through the websites, there was qu it was quite hard to pick some decent websites, um, you know, with a bit of meat on them, with things that were actually wrong with them. Um, first one I got was onlineloans.com. Um, and you can what see- do, What do they sell? Um, loans. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, show you, I'll show you the website. Um, so if you have a look at the website, and they probably don't care for the website too much. They've still got 2019 <laughs> top online loans. Ouch. You may want to change that. Um, but overall, it's, you know, quite a clean, tidy website. And, um, you know, you can get your, your offers, personal loans, business loans, mortgage loans, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, stick the first thing I do is stick it into SEMrush, see what, you know, what's going on traffic-wise. Um, they're based over in the US, so make sure you select the right database. And you can see here it gets little to no traffic. Now, for a website, that ranks for 766 keywords, although the rankings are not great, I would expect it to have some form of traffic. Um, and that obviously throws up alarm bells. So wait to see this, Ross. I'm, I'm one of these guys that think outside the box and do things that maybe others wouldn't think of. So the first thing I check um, with a website like this is uh, Canonical. 
Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, so you see there, look at that. No canonical found. Um, what do you think of that? What do you think of guys that don't do much with the canonicals? Get you in a lot, a lot of trouble that. So, I mean, they take it as a suggestion, not necessarily as a default, but we have uh, seen in multiple occasions, not just a canonical on the page, if it's self-referencing or going to um, somewhere else, we've seen cross-domain canonicals quite a lot as well. So I've seen guys where they have a bunch of different websites and they're trying to maybe migrate something or partially migrate something or what for whatever ridiculous reason. And they will actually put the canonical as a completely different website. Um, yeah, it's go. not good. But there is a few other small things I just wanted to point out quickly with this website before we jump on. Yeah. Um, 27 pages indexed. And... Uh, as I say, the, 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 some of the keywords that these guys are targeting are pretty horrendous um, when you look at the 27 pages, like main FHA loan. What is a Wisconsin FHA loan? The kind of keyword targeting doesn't really bring any search volume. Now, I'm not a specialist in that market, but these are the only pages that you've got that are indexed. The rest of your money, main money pages, I'm not indexed, um, so I'd be looking at duplicate content. Your backlink profile is pretty poor. I think you're getting every link and any link going. Totally irrelevant links on your website, which you can obviously see if you go to your backlinks on here. Um, but I think overall, when people submit their websites for website audits um, or asking for advice on what's wrong, people are very often not even doing the basics. There's nothing categorically majorly wrong with this website where I can audit it and go, no, oh, there's tons of broken links, loads of orphan pages, there's this, that, and the next thing. The bare basics are not even done. Um, and I think that's something that very often goes unnoticed. Um, a lot of the times when I've got people in the industry talking to me, they say, yeah, can you have a look at my website? I've had three guys look at it and I can't for the life of me find out what's going on. And, you know, you look at it and you go, mate, your, your website's full of duplicate content. Is that not one of the first things you would check? Like, nah, nah, it can't be, can't be. Um, and, you know, that was a that was something with a, we've got a mutual friend, Gary Wilson, who, who had one of his websites that was duplicate content. He was going through all of these other guys looking for some weird and wonderful thing that was wrong and it was duplicate content. So I think you have to get the basics right and for onlineloans.com. Um, I don't think they've got a lot of the basics right. Keyword targeting is not right. Um, content's probably not right. Um, just some of the core basics when setting up a website is just not there. And for me, at that point, that's why you're in the position you're in. So you would just... So how, would you, how would you start fixing it? So I noticed when it, all those FHA loans and the only differentiator was the city. So yeah. a lot of times that can be classed as a doorway page. So would you... Would you keep those? Would you add different content to them? Would you get rid of them? Like, what would you do? And then how would you, where would you push them to start making the new content? What would be the first thing you would look at? I mean, I think you have to look at, you know, the, the, these search, these pages don't get any, the, the search terms that are targeting with that, the, they're targeting with that page are not search terms that get, you know, searched for. So you have to look at that and either change it up you know, vary things around or whatever it may be. I think you've got to go back and go right back to the start and get a good content strategy in place and, and actually go after keywords and a, a nice structure that, that's actually valid. As you say, it looks like a doorway uh, page on there. It just looks spammy as hell. You know, making a whole bunch of pages that target FHA, uh, FHA loans just looks garbage. Go after some of the bigger stuff. You know, you've got mortgage loans and, you know, if you look at your main navigation bar, you know, there's a lot of other loans on there and you're going after FHA loans. And I, I get that that might be the long tail or whatever, but it just looks very spammy. I would be going after a mixture of the kind of top end keywords, uh, middle of the road ones, and, and obviously get some long tail ones in there, of course, but it just looks as if this person has just rammed it full of long tails. And, uh, and then basically went and got a whole bunch of crappy links and is hoping for the best. And uh, I think the content and everything needs to kind of been, be removed, cleaned up, um, and target a much wider range of search terms. So for people who are kind of new to SEO that might be in the chat, um, what would be the first place that you'd go to in order to understand things like keyword volume and search intent and all that? Like, how do you do that? 
Are you asking me or the people in the chat? I'm asking you. So uh, oh. let's assume that. So there's there's someone in there who's uh, lean back to ask what's a canonical. Um, so we'll assume like a like lots of varying levels of uh, knowledge. So <laughs> when it comes to doing the keyword research and stuff like that, where would you go and how do you do that? Just to point them in the right direction. So for keyword research, I think you know the, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. One, I would manually look at the, uh, the kind of results on page one for any given search term. And you see the, the bold blue writing, which is people's um, actual search terms, because sometimes using a tool like SEMrush, when you're going very, very specific to an area, isn't going to pull through You know, you know know some of the areas that you've got on there. So um, I would look, first of all, manually at what other, what your competition are going after. Uh, and then I would start looking at SEMrush and stuff like that, because the, you know, the purpose of same rush is to give you accurate data to work with. And obviously you want to go after keywords that, that do have certain volume and you, you have to use data no matter what you, you know, whether you use same rush or some other kind of keyword tool, um, you, you have to put something in there and have something substantial to work with and even debate with the, you know, if it's for a client or whatever, say to the client, here's, you know, 50 keywords that, that all get these kind of search volumes, which ones do you want to attack first and base that on volume or whatever other um, kind of metrics you want to do. But SEMrush would be my go-to tool other than manual checks. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Keyword magic tool for me is just fa fantastic. Gives you all the, like, the question-based keywords, gives you all the kind of head stuff and you can click into all the different groups. So it helps you kind of structure and silo out um, the website as well. Uh, all right, should we move on to the the next one? Well, we do a, a turn each, really. Yes, let's do a turn each. So I've got a really cute one. Um, I think the, they've done a really great job. I hope they're in the chat because it's a great website um, called Rough on the Road. Now, Craig, if I was to say to you I'm rough on the road, you would probably think that I've got a hangover and I'm driving. <laughs> yeah. So I'm feeling a bit rough. Um, so this website is actually very well put together. Um, I do the exact same thing as you when I, I first kick off. I'll go into my SEMrush dashboard and I'll just run to see like what's actually going on here and what kind of traffic do they have. And the thing that kind of shocks me with this site, despite it having you know about a thousand or so backlinks, it's got a hard zero when it comes to traffic. And you're like, mm, okay, that's weird. So the first thing you'd want to do is see, well, do they actually have any content? And yeah, they do have content. So let me just click into it. Um, it's relatively well structured. I suppose the first thing you would notice is um, this is a category page that they've got and then this is a product page. On this particular category page, they have a single sentence of content and that's it. So I, I would seriously look at adding more content onto this particular category page. I'd also look at things like the title. So it says handmade dog collars. First thing I'd be doing is actually jumping into, into keyword analytics keyword magic tool, and I would be get putting dog collars into that so I could start to see, um, so I, I could actually physically see what's going on there and what keywords I could potentially um, target. Another interesting one when it comes to using this, I, I would typically look at what they're already ranking for and try and build on it. Now, as you can see, they're not really ranking for anything and the traffic's really low. So the first thing I'm thinking is, uh, they no index this by accident because <laughs> there's there's no reason for this not to rank. So first thing I'm going to do, exact same as yourself, look at 213 pages live in the index. And you're like, mm, okay, that doesn't make any sense. 213 pages, zero traffic. What would your next port of call be to check, Craig? So I've just got this wee special trick that not a lot of people know about, but it's obviously checking that canonical. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So the uh, first thing I would actually do is just check to see if it was um, no indexed or not. Um, so I would look at the code and just to see if I could find a no index, no follow. And what do you know? So there's a JavaScript version that's no index, no follow, but it's not in the editor, so that's fine. So, I mean, it's not no index, so that's not a, an issue. And like you say, the canonical. Now, when I found this, I thought, oh, you poor soul. You've been sold a, a dream that's not come true for you. For those in the chat that can't see that, um, this particular site used to be a Wix website. So I think this is um, the person's name, J. Ferndrigger or something like that, .wixsite.com, and that's where it's canonicalized to. So when Google comes to this lovely, well-put-together site, it's getting pushed 
to the old Wix version of the website, which of course is not in the index. It's it's completely no index and de index. So they've kind of really damaged themselves there in that they've built it on Wix. It's got indexed um, as the actual domain and it's not been properly redirected across and the canonical being changed. So if you were to change that canonical literally just to the page itself, so a self-referencing canonical is what that's called, um, you would literally see your traffic go through the roof. Um, other things I would have a little look at, so jumping into any sort of product page, um, just purely from a UX point of view, I'd give you a little heads up and say you want the product as well as the add to basket and pricing and stuff like that above the fold. Um, I'm not super sure what this looks like when we move into mobile, but I'm, I'm hoping this goes away because this is kind of redundant um, at the moment. Step out, say, color $26. I would quite like to see uh, what that actually looks like in the SERP. So are they getting any snippets? Oh, good. So they've got, you can see there, they've got some snippets coming up. Um, if you'd want to check to see if your structured data is coming through properly, you'd always use the structured data testing tool and run the test, and it's going to tell you what schema is physically on the page. Um, I'm expecting some sort of pricing and product-based schema. Because we're live streaming this, this may take quite a while because it's, well, it might actually not even work because it's canonicalized to the Wix site, so it might be following it to the non-index. There we go, the non-index uh, site. So here we, we can see here we have... Yep, product, fantastic, a bunch of warnings. So it doesn't look like anything crazy that you can maybe uh, tidy up. So biggest tip for this particular website owner, change that canonical and how much traffic do you think we'll get, Craig, after they change it? Just over a couple of thousand, maybe? Yeah, I mean, you'll de I mean it'll go through the roof. Um, you see a considerable difference, I would imagine. Um, so yeah, quite a glaring mistake there. Yeah, it's a shame because they put a lot of effort in and it's a really nice uh, website. Uh, a couple of small things from a UX point of view. You've called this section sniffs. I don't know if that means something in the dog world, but it's kind of like if you're a, a design agency, you call your blog like the journal. It's a bit pretentious. It's a bit stupid. So use internal language for internal copy. Don't use it for core pieces of your, your navigation. Um, and I would seriously think about changing the way the, the structure works. So from shop into your categories, have big standalone category pages with lots of good content on it. Before we actually go into sniffs, what is sniffs? Do you know? <laughs> um, I mean, I know what it means up here, but... Um, <laughs> oh, it's not going to <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to say Look at how good this content is. They've got like their own, um, like they, they've made their own kind of animations and stuff like that. I've got all these lovely photographs. One thing I would shout out as well, make sure, so this is, yeah, good, some decent internal linking. When it comes to any sort of internal linking, my easy advice to work out where to link to is to go to the, the kind of authority page, if you like, and do site command, and then the page itself, and then put the keyword you want to rank for and what that's going to do it's going to show me not only the the actual urls that are uh, connected to the, to the site it's actually also going to show me as far as google's concerned the ones that are most related to callers and the most high authority so if i click on this page or this page and i do not have an internal link to that callers page you should probably add it because as far as google's concerned this is great how to determine your dog's caller size it should, this should internally link back to that main callers page because Google thinks A, it's related, and B, it's one of the most powerful. So that's a really simple, basic way to do internal linking, um, but it's a reasonably good rule of thumb. All right. Uh, you're up next. Do you get anything interesting? Um, I've got a confession, first of all. So prior oh. to the webinar, um, Ross was WhatsApping me saying I found this little gift and the canonical check was actually Ross's uh, <laughs> on, on that rough as whatever the, the website was called there. Um, and I was like, man, what a weirdo. Like, why, why are you going that far into checking a website? And he's like, yeah, um, it had zero traffic. So that's the next stage. So I don't want to take that as my own. It would be really unfair that 
golden little nugget was actually Rossi's, and I, I feel awkward, Ross. I don't, I just don't want to. Steal I thought, thunder. I thought it was great. See, when you done it, I was like, "That's hilarious that you're just taking my thunder for that." <laughs> <laughs> I was I was hoping at the start of the webinar you'd say right Craig go first um, <laughs> and you did you fell into the trap so yeah um, when I seen I, that smile on your when I seen that smile on your face I thought I bet he's auditing my agency site and I bet it's a mess <laughs> I bet that's what you're gonna do your, your agency website was on the list as well you must have submitted your own email address uh, well I, I want free consultancy from you mate you're I, I want some of the best minds in search working on it man we'll do let, let's do a, a private um, podcast or, or live show with me just beating into your business we can do that one day let's, um, do, it. let's do it but anyway beating someone else's business um, for now I'm only kidding this next website is fairly new um, now what would you instantly think this website was about Ross it's called <laughs> Warm, <laughs> Warm Slap Out uh, this is like the is this a Penn Island type? You know, have you heard of the Penn Island thing? Yes, I, is that, I have Penn Island dot info. Um, do I don't you? know if it's still there. Um, I used to have someone's face on it for a laugh. Um, so, <laughs> so is it is it worn slap out? Is it about lipstick maybe, or is it is it literally worn slap out? Yeah, no, is it about being tired. Um, I, do you know what? I've actually forgot what it's about now. Are but anyway, you know? this website is a, um, for people, recipes for the joyfully exhausted. Um, so you're a warm slap out, Ross, because you're always <laughs> joyfully exhausted um, anytime I speak to you, um, working too hard. So you should have a look at this. Um, it's from a girl called Catherine. Um, it's a relatively new website. Um, so it's pretty unfair to hammer her completely. She's got some nice growth here. I think the website looks as if it went live around about November time. Um, what is quite good though, um, and what I like about Catherine's um, website is the amount of content that she's put on it already. Um, she is literally hammering these blog posts out. Wow. 47 um, blog posts she's done in you know a two or three month period. Um, now, obviously, she's starting to pull through for some keywords. Some are some are at the bottom end of page one. There's a whole bunch on page two, um, but you can see there, you know, there's some real good stuff there. And I think for um, recipes and cake recipes and everything else that <coughs> she's going after, it's a relatively um, good market. You can get a lot of set of <coughs> volume on there. I'm bloody dying here. I know, die quieter. <laughs> yeah, so a couple of things. You know, I, first of all, I had a look at the website. Um, you know, the speed score, 2.3 seconds. It's, it's not great. Um, however, you've got a lot of green on here um, through GT Metrics, so it clearly looks as if you have put some form of effort into speeding that up. Um, 80 requests, so your website's in WordPress. It looks as if you're using a hell of a lot of plugins, um, which I think most people would try and advise you against because it's going to impact your website. Um, Especially for <coughs> a blog, right? Like when I see people with like 30 plugins and it's just, it's a, a fundamentally it's a blog, you're just like, what are you using them for? You know? It's very, very plain. You know, it's not as if this has, it's got its Instagram thing on the sidebar there and a couple of, you know some social stuff but realistically there's way too many plugins on here so try and remove your plugins um that are not being used there's probably a whole bunch of them on there also um you know i think internal linking wise so i ran a quick audit on the website so let me just go to projects It's interesting. The first thing you've done is you went to see the the site map to see the big list of uh, piece of content. So is that something you'll always do? You'll just you'll try and route around for a site map, but so you can just see what's actually there. Yeah, well, I like to see what first of all what it's ranking for and how many you know articles are on there. Um, so for me, um, you know, that's what it's all about. You need to have content on there in order to rank, whether that's in page 10, 5 or 4 or whatever, you know, who cares? Um, as long as it's been indexed, then you've obviously got somewhere to start. So just one of my weird quirks. Um, 
But internal linking, if you look at the website, um, it's not great. And as Ross said in the previous uh, website he was checking, you want to make sure that uh, you know, you're know you internally linking to the, the pages that Google feels is most relevant to your search terms. And you can obviously do uh, the site command that Ross suggested and make sure that you uh, get your internal links on there. So I can't really see... I don't think you've got yeah, one there. Um, is there a category structure with this? Is it all just blog post, blog post, blog post? Is there like yeah. slash so, recipe slash cake or anything like that? No. Nah. So that's the next thing uh, that I was going to say for... Sorry. Just to double check this. Dessert. I see. So what happens is um, if you've got 147 pages as you have right now, um it's all going to end up messy. As Ross said, you, you would probably want to have a category structure on here because it's just all flat URLs. Um, you know, whether you can on to um, weeknight dinners, you've obviously, um, you know, you've got your, your weekend dinners here, sorry, um, and then just a flat URL. So you probably want to look at fixing your URL structure there as well because if you're going to continue to blog at the same speed you're, you're currently blogging at, um, then that is going to end up messy. You know, if you've got a 1,000 URLs or 2,000 URLs or whatever, it's going to be absolutely horrendous. So I think, you know, sorting out the, the URL structure is a good place to look at. Let's clean up, um, you know, the plugins. I think your template color and text um, are not great. You know, it's kind of grey writing and a white background. It's kind of sore on the eyes. Um, but overall, what uh, the reason I, I picked this one was not to criticise, um, just to show that someone clearly has a passion for recipes and they have went well out there and smashed out 147 blog posts, which is that's a great amount of work. And I think that shows that you've got the hunger and the desire to do well. It doesn't look like you monetize that website just yet. Um, and I'm not sure what your monetization plan is and um, but i'm sure once you're getting traffic you know then you can start to to look at monetizing that in a, a number of different ways but as i say a couple of quick pointers there obviously on the site speed and the the flat url structure and a couple other bits and bobs but i, I just want to see a pat in the back because i'm looking through websites and there was some websites there and i'm going geez you know there's there's websites here that have got no traffic no nothing and i thought you know what this girl deserves a pat in the back get someone that's got their finger out and actually just went all out um, and given it a bash. And, the, you know, the, the rewards are there. You know, you've got some page one rankings. So keep up the good work and hopefully you can fine tune that and um, go on and, and make money from it. What would you add for, so I think with a lot of those bloggers, one of the big issues they have is their ability to gain links into a lot of those. It's, it's quite hard going. Um, I know that if you've got a bunch of recipes, you can actually submit original recipes to places and get links back to your original source like that. Um, what else would you do in terms of link acquisition for that kind of blogger world? Um, is there any kind of tips you would you would have for her to get like featured in places? Um, I mean, you would have to potentially do some quirky stuff like the, the likes of what you do, some PR stuff. You could probably do some quite cool stuff there. But for me, it would be guest posts and stuff like that. Um, you know, just getting guest posts on other websites. And obviously, it costs cost you a few quid. Um, but that is one thing that your website does lack. And I think for any website, you've got to get the balance right between content and links because it's the same as a guy lifting weights. You know, if I don't go to the gym and I'm not giving myself protein, you can't just stick 100 kilos on a bend, uh, on a dumbbell and expect me to just go like that and lift it straight away. You've got to go through... 20 kilos, 25 kilos, 30 kilos and work your way up. And it's the same with links. You've just got to build links to kind of prop your pages up um, and send power to, to the kind of main money pages. And I, I think realistically out with, you know, what you're suggesting is trying to get some of those um, original recipe places, maybe some fun PR stuff, you know, some quirky, you know, crazy stories or whatever it might be that you PR guys do. Um, <coughs> some guest posts. And, I, and I, I don't think you go far wrong um, from there, but just try and diversify your link strategy. Don't try and not stick to one. I think you're obviously in quite a boring 
niche, if you like, so it's quite hard to make up good stories, if you like. Um, you know, like Ross, for example, does PR and comes up with stats and figures and all sorts of wacky stuff that, that obviously trigger interest. And, in you know, I think, would, would you agree, Ross, that maybe recipes is one of those ones that's maybe slightly harder to to get that kind of um, input? It's hard to make it new. So it's people love to consume it, so it's easy to get traffic, but it's hard to get it newsworthy and get it featured in newspapers because coming up with a recipe isn't intrinsically newsworthy. You wouldn't expect to see that on the front page. It's like, oh, uh, I can't remember the person's name, comes up with a new uh, velvet red velvet cake recipe. Like that, That's not going to end up in the news. However, if you look at things like, look at editorial calendars of lifestyle sections. So pick your favourite Sunday newspaper and look through the lifestyle section and you'll start to see themes emerging. So a uh, big theme recently has been like the royal family, so um, moving to Canada. So what you could do there is you could actually make a cake in the shape of like Prince Harry's head or something like that, and then pitch that into all the, the royal uh, journalists uh, to get them to feature that like kind of slightly quirky, slightly weird thing that you've just done. Like think outside the box like that, and that, that should help you kind of get along. Uh, as well. Alrighty, so are we moving on to site number three? Yes, you go and give my throat a rest. So this is kind of uh, quite apt because it's a health <laughs> website and we're both ill. Um, so this is called Avanos. Um, they say that they innovate every day. They're a medical device company dedicated to challenging the status quo every day and everything we do. So nice and generic, and I still don't really know what you do. Um, so first things first, um, I'm just gonna click around and start to understand what you, you actually do. So uh, acute pain, I see that you've used a triangle instead of an A for your text there. Understand that's a brand thing, don't do that. Um, Google doesn't know what, what that is. As far as they are concerned, that's cute P space I N. Um, although it's not going to make a huge difference, internal anchor text is a factor. So change that back to just normal letters if you possibly can. Um, so you do pain management uh, solutions. And when I click on that, I don't know if you've seen that. Did you notice what just happened there, Craig? Did you see? I'll, let, let me do it again. Avanos.com, explore. Oh, what did you do? So what they've got now, they've got completely different ah. domains for every single one of their services. Um, so when we go into chronic pain, digestive health, et cetera, every single one of them is a completely different website. So yeah, so first thing I'm gonna recommend, and it's probably not gonna make you very popular in the office, you're gonna have to redirect all of them back into a single domain. So you want to have a migration strategy set up, SEMrush have a um, full do piece of documentation on their blog about how to run through step-by-step -step migrations. Um, and then you're going to want to feel one redirect everything back into the main domain. There might be some uh, reasoning behind putting them on over multiple domains, but one of the first things I would do is get the stakeholders in a room and start to understand why have you put these across five websites instead of one? Did you have a slightly overzealous salesman who was your website builder sell you five websites instead of one that that does happen um i'd seriously look at um redirecting now let's just assume that these were all the same domain what we're going to do from a seo point of view so i mean the first thing i would kind of highlight is um things like surgical or acute or surgical pain solutions um and we take pain personally so surgical pain solutions and acute pain solutions people don't use that language to find things so um it's going to be necessary for you to start to do a little bit of keyword research the example i always give to people is um when it comes to accident lawyers when i first my very first client uh, back in well it would have been about 10 years ago now um he said oh we're, we're not ranking for rtas we need to get traffic for RTAs. Craig, do you know what an RTA is? Yeah. Uh, go on, road traffic accident, I used to There do. you go. So, yeah. 
But the thing is, nobody searches for RTAs, do they? They search for, I've been injured in a car crash or car crash compensation or something like that. So just being mindful of who your customer actually is and actually putting together the correct uh, language for them. So you get things like umbiliary pain pumps. Now, if you're selling that to trade and people are looking for that, great. If you're selling it to consumers, then probably not. So this looks like it's probably being sold into hospitals and things like that. Needles, there we go. So we're into a world where it's pretty standardized now. So first thing I'm going to do, as always, I'm just going to check that inside your product page, you've got proper schema. Uh, these URLs are getting very large. Let's have a little look. So the reason why I'm so hot on making sure there's schema on there is because making sure Google understands the intent of the page is really important. When it comes to like needles and catheters and things like that, you're in, okay, so you do, but you've got it, it's all broken. So guys, I would have a little look at your schema just to make sure that it's actually filing correctly and um, it's being interpreted correctly by Google. Looks like it isn't. Another thing to note is you are in what's called a YMYL situation, not to be confused with YHYH. Craig, do you know what that is? I was more thinking YMCA. <laughs> what's going on? No, 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 I'm not well. <laughs> um, uh, so YMYL is your money or your life. So when you look at uh, Google's webmaster, um, search guidelines. They, one of the things that they do for the people who are manually reviewing websites is they put certain websites into categories of your money or your life, meaning that if this negatively affects someone's health and well-being and happiness, they're going to treat it differently. Um, and they have things called EAT signals, which is expertise, authority, and trust. Now, what's your opinion on EAT, Craig? Because I know that we come from an old school where you can pretty much brute force a ranking if you really want to. But uh, even some of like the really hardcore old school guys are now very much struggling in medical niches. Um, what's the big core things that you've seen guys who are running medical sites do that, that would help with things like EAT? I mean, I think it would be common sense, you know, you can't, with medical websites, you can't just have some random blogger like the girl previously, you know, chucking out recipes galore, um, you know, the recipes are not going to kill anyone, well, unless it's uh, maybe my mum's home cooking. Um, yeah. But I think in terms of, you know, medical and everything else, I can see why Google would implement that. You know, you've got to have authority, uh, you know, and trust. You can't have any old person sticking stuff online, you know, especially about medical things, because I think, you know, even the likes of me when I'm not well, you know, I start Googling things and then you start, you know, reading stuff and you get scared and, you know, we can't have that. Um, out there, people can't just be chucking anything out there. So I think for me, building up, you know, like like we do, you know, in our industry, we're trying to build up some expert authority and trust, you know, by appearing in webinars and speaking at conferences and everything else, and trying to to build a reputation as someone who may know what they're talking about when it comes to SEO. I think you know, medical wise, you have to do similar, um, and <clears throat> you've got to future proof yourself. I think. You know, Google are going to look at ways, you know, they, they obviously look to penalise things that are, you know, not penalise, but get rid of the garbage, so to speak. And they've got to look at things like that, especially in the, the medical niche. So it's something you have to do to future proof your your business, you know, be an authority. And, you know, we're doing it ourselves. And although it may never be a thing for us um, in the SEO world, um, you know, you still want to be known as authority and then the guy and a guy in your industry that knows what he's talking about. So I see no reason why you wouldn't go down that route of doing what we do, webinars, press articles, conferences, um, and just building up, you know, a good social following and everything else where you're offering good advice. From a, Yeah, absolutely. And from a technical point of view, when it comes to actually implementing all this stuff, so one of the things is actually having real people that you can actually prove that they're experts in the field. Now, you've already kind of done that with this uh, site here. You've got David Ball and all, all these guys are like front and center and their information's there. And when you click on it, it's a little bit about them. Where it lets itself down is this is just text with some guy's image. You want to be linking to all of their social profiles and you want to be using schema 
same as. So inside the, the code itself, you want to be saying that this person is the same as, then linked to maybe their alumni page on the university they went to, linking to their LinkedIn profile, their social profiles. Because what that does for Google is it starts to build the picture of who this person is as an entity. Because at the moment, as far as they're concerned, um, Joseph F. Woody, as he's connected to Avanos, is not actually an enti entity, he's just a bit of text next to a picture. So that'd be one of the things I'd be looking at there. When it comes to things like industry news, um, if you're mentioning anything that is, so it looks like a lot of financial stuff. Here we go, we're talking about, oh my goodness. So they're, it's linking out to another website. So what I'd be, yeah, Fierce Biotech. It looks like you own a bunch of websites. I would do a big inventory of everything that you own and start to push everything into a single, source having it split across so many it must be really tiresome to actually make sure that this is actually working and i don't know how you do tracking for leads and conversions and things like that but it must be very hard as another one and you're linking out to a bunch of broken resources um this feels like before we get into like any seo stuff this is admin i think we need to decide the domain we're going to use we need to decide the structure we're going to use and we need to decide how we're pushing ourselves out there because um, otherwise the sites are really nice and really well put together and um, generally fine. Um, maybe some better keyword targeting, but first thing I'd be looking at is let's get this in ship shape so Google can actually understand who you are and what you are. So when it comes to the EAT bit, you're completely sorted. Okay, do you have another one? Um, yep, I've got another one. Um, but before we go into the other one, just a couple of things. Gary Gwaltney, if you just give us your domain name, um, we can have a look at that, uh, not the URL, just the domain name. Sachin, um, we will be asking or, or doing some questions um, in the next 10 minutes. There's no need to continually ask about no answers yet or what about my request. Um, we're we're auditing some websites first, so please be patient and we will look to answer your question if it's um, of value. So we'll get to that shortly. Um, next website I've got... I'll just start sharing my screen again. Oh. Is signaturecheekrealestate.com. Um, so I'll just go back here. I've messed it all up. I would say just having a snoop through everything um, while you were talking there, Ross. But uh, a real estate website. Um, I'll just get it up in front of us. Looks okay. Um, Chicago-based real estate company. Uh, you, know, you can search for your properties and prices and everything else as you would expect from a real estate website. Um, but you can see here on the right-hand sidebar, um, it does link to a lot of content, um, a lot of landing pages. Um, you know, uh, you know, a lot of areas within Chicago, which is probably a good thing to do. Um, you know, on, on the outside, looking in, you know, it looks as if you've got a lot of content going on. Um, but when we look at your website, from the outside, you know, when we put it into same rush or whatever, you know, you've got some growth here. I think your website came out in August. Um, and you've got, you know, a very, very small amount of traffic again. 589 keywords and very little to no traffic mainly because all your keywords are at the you know bottom of page two and further down um one one thing no canonical two your website takes seven seconds to load you may want to look into that um no one's going to wait seven seconds for a website to load um, and one thing that I do want to touch on is the kind of backlink. So you've done, you know, it would seem that you've done a lot of content on your website, which is all good and well, but getting backlinks from German, you know, whatever the hell this is. Uh, I, wouldn't, I, would, I wouldn't click on it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to click on it. Um, another German one, you know, the backlinks that are going to your website are absolutely horrendous and look very, very spammy. Um, probably looks like some form of, 
GSA blast or something like that, and they're dropping off. The thing that I'm noticing here is you're getting links and they're all dropping off, which would tend to be <coughs> some kind of automated software. But in the grand scheme of things, you have got um, six referring domain names, and six of those real geeks you know there's there's a couple that you know a few of them are really good um and relevant and you want to do more of that i think you know in terms of your website and functionality it needs to be speeded up you could probably have you know always have more content but i think backlinks is an area again ross that people very often um ignore and you know people become and, and this is just my opinion and um, people become very obsessed with um, you know, doing site audits and uh, checking all this kind of stuff, and they, they just totally ignore backlinks. They don't do it, and I know many agencies and whatnot just don't touch backlinks because they're scared. And I think that has to be addressed, you know, within the industry because I know you personally, Ross, have seen, uh, you know, on your affiliate website some good results from backlinks, and they clearly still do work as long as they're relevant coming from websites with traffic and stuff like that. And it looks to me that either you're not building backlinks or you're using cheap Fiverr gigs. And the backlinks is the the biggest, as far as I'm concerned, and I know people will probably say I'm biased because I do, you know, backlinks is probably one of the strongest things, um, you know, in my, you know, where my skills are. You know, talk to me about schema, I have no clue what I'm talking about. Um, but backlinks it really is one of the most important things you should be doing over and above having a sound technical structure and having decent content on your website um and that is just pretty much non-existent on your website your website's been live since august i would expect to see more and um, you do have you know top end of page two rankings for some search terms especially in chicago and you've got all your kind of long tails targeting areas within chicago so i think Overall, the, the structure's right there. Um, you just need to get better quality backlinks. And again, uh, there's no glaring other obvious mistakes other than no canonical. What do you think, Ross? Yeah, I mean, the, the backlinks thing is so huge. So it's kind of like, the way I look at it is when you go into the hospital, they'll put you on a drip immediately regardless of what's um, wrong with you. And that's what we do when we triage a client's website. They just go straight on to a link, <coughs> excuse me, a link building package. So we can start powering up different parts of the, the website and then we'll eventually get to the bigger, grander PR stuff uh, later as we move through all the, the technical fixes. I'm going to say something slightly controversial for these guys. Um, the lack of traffic means a real lack of brand search and lack of brand search means lack of trust. One way to drive brand search, I know this sounds utterly ridiculous, is through PPC. Now, if my old sales... Uh, guy heard me say that from back in the day when I was with a uh, agency up in Glasgow he used to say that the more you spend on PPC the higher your rankings now we know that's nonsense however and hear me out here if you were to spend 10 grand on your PPC and on a bunch of generic terms and the second time they came back they were to google your brand name and come through organic that actually would have some level of positive effect but for now i'm with you craig i would take every bit of cash you've got and start putting it into link acquisition in terms of doing that because you're in real estate it looks like a bunch of stuff has actually fallen off because sometimes you put a listing up someone will link to the listing and then you'll take the listing down so you've just essentially deleted the link equity make sure you're 301 redirecting listings that you're taking down into the correct places don't just throw one up to the home page because you'll end up with a soft 404 and that's no good for anyone. Um, try and find like for like or just leave it up as listed but just say that it's been sold. So the page exists, the link equity still flows but ultimately they can't kind of rebuy something you've already sold. Um, another thing is real estate agents, especially in America, most of them have their own websites and social platforms and things like that. Reach out to these individuals um, and start to get them to actually link to their own listings on your platform. That will start that uh, moving as well. It's localized to Chicago. That's an absolute gift. So I'd be looking at every single major business in Chicago that needs some sort of SEO presence, has got a blog, something like that. Reaching out to those guys, literally pick 500, 1,000 uh, businesses and reach out and say, I'd love to collaborate with you on a piece of um, content if you're interested and here's what's in it for you, here's what's in it for uh, me, if you've got something to offer, like, you know, maybe you've got a big social following or an email newsletter, 
you can use that as collateral to actually get on. And I would just do that, like literally thousands of them, you'll get about 10% to say yes, and 100 links is perfect. That's gonna get you into a really good place. Um, if you're super strapped for cash, I would seriously look at some sort of offshore uh, labor to help you with that. So I would get straight onto things like Upwork um, to find someone to do that for you. Or if you've got a little bit of cash, I'd maybe use a link service. Um, GetMeLinks.com, I think, is a relatively well put together service. I know we shouldn't endorse stuff, but that's yeah, um, yeah. That, that's a pretty good one. Or linksforyou.com. Linksforyou.com. Okay, there you go. All about so, that branding, the link vendors. Yeah. So as I say, linksforyou.com is probably the better of the two, in all honesty. But um, that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> But quickly, I just want to address something. <coughs> Mendo Digital asks, what does Craig mean by GSC Blast? GSA um, is an automated link building tool. It is black hat and something you should steer well clear of. So, um, yeah, don't do not do that. Normally, you get these in Fiverr and Conquer and places like that. So, no good. So, yeah, what? See, yeah. German tool, right? So let me just share this screen so you can see it. It's pretty nasty stuff. And I guarantee if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get de indexed pretty quickly. I don't know if you can see that on my screen there, but this is what it is here. It's just something that essentially, how does it work? Craig? It just it automatically signs up for profiles and drops links into them. Yeah. And all sorts it, of you know, blog comments, all that kind of garbage. It's just a whole heap of garbage. And it's something that you know, millions of people are using, so you get the same old links that every Tom, Dick, and Harry's got, and it just really offers no value. It's um, pure and utter garbage. Do not do it. Absolutely. Um, All right. Should we move on to? Should we do some questions, or should we move on to another site? I would probably do questions. You've got eight minutes, and I know there was a few guys um, asking things. I'm not too sure where those questions went, but all right. Um, we have so Joe Seagull Seagull as in the bird or Seagal I think it's Seagal as in Stephen Seagal oh. Joe Seagal the cousin of Stephen Seagal karate champion um, why would anyone link to that website is the con is the content worthy one of the struggles of real estate SEO um, good stuff by the way guys thank you Joe that's very nice of you to say yeah it is hard to get um, links into something like real estate but so the way in which we do anything, we kind of manufacture the news for our clients. So a lot of our clients, like real estate clients, they're not newsworthy. What we've got a listing in like Tampa, Florida. Mm, no, no, that's not going to not not going to make the news, especially in Florida, because there's a lot of crazy shit stuff that happens in um, Florida. So if it was a real estate website, I'd highly recommend looking at the data that's physically available around uh, real estate and property prices and things like that and matching it with something weird that doesn't perhaps match it. So for example, one of the things that um, we would do is go to uh, maybe like the some sort of government uh, website in the States and start pulling down um, all of the different housing prices over time. And I'd maybe create something that looks at the major areas that have changed over time and how much more valuable those places are and build something around that. Or to make it more interesting, connect it with something like divorce rates or connect it with something like uh, average income. So you can look at things like, you know, is there a correlation between the amount of families moving into a particular area and the average income or job availability in an area? So you can start becoming some sort of like thought leader in that area. And if you make it hyper localized, I think that guy was from Chicago, you're known as the guy um, in that area. Also, if you look at services like Haro, help a reporter out, um, you can localize that. And if you use tools like um, Muckrack, again, they will give you all the things that the journalists are looking for on a day-to-day -day basis, localized. So someone one day might be looking for commentary on, what do you think about this new motorway or highway <coughs> they're, they're building through the middle of Chicago? Although it's not technically about real estate, it does apply to you. So I would actually reach out and say, I'm an authority because I'm a property developer, real estate agent. Let me provide comment and then they'll link to you um, when you provide comment. Can I give you another one? This is, I'll give it a quick story. Um, so there was a letting agent, not quite real estate, but letting agent, similar niche, renting out houses. And one of my friends in Glasgow, Gordon Campbell, I think it was Gordon Campbell, I'm not sure, made up some crap 
bullshit story um, to the press that he, he had this fake persona and everything else and he went to view the house and it was £400 a month um, but it was only the bathtub that was available for rent. That actually made the press. No joke. Like he made yeah. that as if someone had listed the property um, and <laughs> listed the bathtub for rent and it got in um, the Evening Times which is quite a powerful link, man. So Yeah, that's great. I love those PR stunts are definitely a good shout. We've got a bunch more questions coming in. Juicing Systems has asked, um, if you only have one clear lead generator on your site, like request a quote, how else can you generate leads or get people to give their info? Um, got, easy, on you go. Gleam.io. Um, so you can run competitions, you can do all that kind of stuff, um, as well as on social media and stuff like that. So you can do giveaways and competitions and polls and all that kind of stuff to capture people's information which is just one way of doing it well think about this webinar itself so we everyone who submitted these websites done so with an email address so you can do things like webinars where people can submit things and get things for free that works quite well as well and um, the hubspot way of doing things is creating these things called lead magnets where you give away some sort of value exchange that's not necessarily a sale so if it's juicing um, you're looking at you'd maybe have like the green mean way to use kale to make it taste better in a smoothie as a recipe or you'd have a recipe kit for green smoothies in a little ebook that they would give you their email and then you'd get it over to them like that um, if you're using video on your website um, just having something like Wistia which is just a video player and when you scroll over it, it actually says if you want to subscribe and be notified when the video comes out next so during the world of juicing and health, maybe you could do like a weekly news show about the new hot things in health. And if people wanted to be notified about it, they can subscribe. A million and one things, give them something of value and they'll give you their email. Uh, Paul DeFice, uh, any weight given to Google page speed results? I'm happy to answer that one if you if you want. Yeah. No, you're the man. Take the call. So Google PageSpeed results, if you mean, is there any weight given to the numbers that a, a lighthouse report gives you? So, for example, if I was to, I don't, I know we don't have a ton of time to do this, but if you're to jump into a website, inspect element, and then run a lighthouse audit, so we'll go inspect. You're not sharing your screen, just so you know. Oh, yeah. How's it now? That's it now. Cool. Um, so what we'd want to do is run a audit and we'd want to run a, a speed audit. So do you mean that does the output of one of these speed tests make a difference? Um, no, if you get 100%, it doesn't actually matter. It's how, how long it actually takes. So think of things like first contentful paint. How long does it physically take for the first piece of content to load? TTI, time to interactive. How long does it take to become interactive? Ultimately, get your site loading in under two seconds and you'll be absolutely fine. Don't worry about what, what's the uh, Pingdom and GT metrics and all that. You can get 100% on all of those and your site could be loading horrifically and it could have no basis in rankings. If you're asking, does a fast site equal, is it a ranking factor? I would say, yep, absolutely, I think it is, especially for things like publishing and things that need to be very fast. I think more and more user experience is becoming baked into how the algorithm works. But in terms of, you know, does it matter if these are 100 or 25 or whatever? Nah, if your website, you know, doesn't load for five, 10 seconds, it doesn't matter what these metrics typically say. Um, we do have your man Gary asking about Google Analytics again, Ross, um, yep. saying that they've stopped using the network ID feature. What should he be using now? Do you know anything about that? I don't. You'll need to give me a little bit more information, Gary. That I don't know what the network ID feature is. If you want to give us some more information, I'd be happy to to answer that for you. Um, I'm Craig, if, I was feeling awkward there. I'm like, I'm going to pass the buck on to him because I have no bloody clue what you're talking about. No, so, I mean it's it's quite an esoteric uh, question. So Paul is asking again, which site would be the best to measure speed? Just a lighthouse report, the exact thing that I just done on the screen. Uh, do that. Network ID, who's visiting? Gary, do you want to send an email to either Craig or I? Um, in fact, we'll reach out to you uh, and we can diagnose that for you. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure what you're what you're asking us. Um, who, who is visiting? So I know what who is visiting is. It's obviously something along the lines of lead forensics and whatnot, which 
shows you, I think that one's about 30 bucks a month and it shows you who's on your website, you know, and some more specific details about that company. Um, and I'm assuming they've stopped something along those lines. But yeah, send us a send us a message and we'll have a look into it. And I know. All oh, right. It, he said it tells us the domain it's visiting and it's stopped at what should be using now. So I think you just answered. Lead metrics is a good one. Uh, what's the shark? Something shark? <laughs> I don't, I don't well, know. I no, I'm only kidding. Um, so in terms of like finding out the domain that's visiting, there's a lot of CR CRMs that do that for you now. So I know that there you go. Lead feeder. Thank you, Juicing Systems. Lead feeder will do that for you. Um, a lot of uh, CRMs like HubSpot will do it for you uh, as well. Um, so that might be a good shout for you. So we're coming up to seven o'clock, guys. Thank you very much for uh, participating and answering, asking all the questions. Craig, thanks for uh, coughing and spluttering your way through. I think you've done a brilliant job to kind of brave it through and get out of the house into the into the office. Thanks very much. Um, if the guys want to know a little bit more about you, how would they go about doing that? Um, first off, I'm not. I'm in the house and I'm sitting in my boxers with this on, just so you can know. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, thank you for that. But yeah, you can find me on craigcampseo.com. All my social media stuff's on there if you want to reach out. And um, I'm more than happy to chat and answer questions. Ross, where can we find you? Uh, just Google me because I'm an SEO after all. Just Google Ross Tavendale and you'll, I'm sure you'll find it. My business is Taipei Media, taipeemedia.net. All right, guys, thank you very much. Until next time, we will see you later. See you later.